Hi, I'm Jerry Albante. I'm Bobby White. Nina Gilkinson. And this is a word on swing. Then we'll have cool intro music. <laughs> then I'll have like Seagull like thrusting at the camera. Yeah. Okay. In three, two, one. My name is Jerry Almonte. I am here with Nina Gilkinson. Here for our very special episode of A Word on Swing. A Word on Swing. Get it? And we're just here to chat because uh, I've known Nina for a long time. It feels like a long time. 14 years. Wow. I think you were 14 when I met you. I was. Wow. You just blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> 14. It, this is, so you spent like most of your life, it seems like, as a Lindy Hopper or yes. in Lindy Hop. Yes, I have. Do you think about that? Do you think of it in those terms? Um, I do sometimes. The For me, it's most weird when I think about what I'm going to do when I'm done dancing. Yeah. Or when I'm done teaching, because I don't have a lot of other skills. Because I never focus on anything else nearly as much as I focus on this or not even close. Uh, a couple years ago, I actually tried to get a, a day job. I was like, I'm not fuss. Sure. I was like, fuck this. I'm oh. tired. I don't travel. I'm exhausted. I don't stay home. Oh, that's funny. And my parents were ailing, and they were sick, and I was tired, and I just wanted to be with my family and with my boyfriend and be home and whatever. So I tried to get a job as a secretary at a place in Baltimore. And, uh, they would not let me, they wouldn't even let me interview because I didn't have a degree in oh. anything. I was like, I don't need a degree in answering phones. I answer phone like a champion. I can do this. Um, but it, it did make me realize, like, I have spent, I have actually dedicated all of my energy towards this. I'll well, back up a second. Do you have a GED? No, technically I do not. Oh, wow. Technically I'm a fourth grade dropout. <laughs> <laughs> but you were homeschooled. Yeah, I was. I just, I, I graduated, graduated early and, you know, I was like, I'll just wait. I don't really want to take my GED right now. I just don't want to go through it. So it sounds annoying. And then I waited and I waited and I waited. Now I'm 28, so I kind of feel like I don't care. Well, you've kind of done quite a bit. You have a pretty extensive resume, even without it. I mean, I guess that doesn't help in some circumstances. No. You're in a ballroom now. Yep. You're an international Lindy Hop instructor. You run one of the biggest, if not, it's one of the biggest Lindy events in the entire world. Yeah. I mentioned this earlier today. You had said you had not actually considered all those things all at once. No, I, they, in my head, they're kind of three separate entities. Like, <clears throat> ILHC is one part of me and teaching is a really different part of me and then the ballroom is a, a, just it feels like almost a different person mostly because the people uh, you know at ILHC I'm, I'm I'm an organizer so I'm you know making sure there's enough water and people have the right hotel rooms and the things are running on time and that you know there's people watching. The door. Actually, I don't have to worry about people watching the door because as long as they're being awesome. But you know, there's like there's like those kinds of things to worry about. And then when I'm teaching, like you know, as, as a teacher, you're a personality. Like, and not that that person is any different than the person I am, but it is like you're you're on all the time. You're in front of people. They expect something from you. You know, uh, you, you're just you're just you're a personality, and you're out. You know. Yeah. Um, and then at the ballroom, no one has any idea who I am. I'm their weekly teacher. Like they're like, oh, Nina dances. That's cool. She teaches me things sometimes. Like it, you know, it is. It's like it's that 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 one feels the most separate to me because it's. Uh, I actually have like a little bit of a hand in those people dancing. Yeah. Where I feel like uh, when I go travel, like I get to like tell people things, and that's really cool. But I don't get to be like helpful or a part of the journey of them actually figuring it out. I feel like you kind of drop nuggets in people's lap and then say like, good luck, I'll see you in a year. Yeah. Um, but it's a different, it's a different feeling. Yeah. But yeah, no, I had never actually considered all of those things together as being me. Are you 
did pretty well for yourself, even you know, from the beginning. Yeah. Well, I mean, you did well in some contests. You were teaching like locally. I was teaching. Yeah, I taught in my first event in when I was fourteen. Yeah. Texas. Yeah. And you taught. So you yeah, get some regular gigs. Yeah. yeah. We were still talking ten years ago. It's like, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Whatever. Um, you were talking about uh, you know, fashion designer and some other possibilities. Uh, at what point, or did it ever? Did it ever strike you if you wake up one day and realize I'm an international in the top of Um I don't know, I think I still kinda of struggle with it. Like I doesn't it doesn't always feel like that's me sometimes, you know what I mean? Like when I actually think like when I start talking to people about stuff and I'm like, oh yeah, when I was in Korea and blah 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 like sometimes that seems kinda of like a different person. But I I mean I think it was like I guess it was a couple of years ago. I think it was about a couple of years ago that I actually stopped to think about it and was like, oh, I'm pretty fancy. <laughs> oh, interesting. I'm pretty good at this. Oh. Because it's just, it's one of those things like the, the lifestyle is such that, uh, at least for me, I'm sure it's really different for everybody, but like the way that the Lindy Hop instructor lifestyle fits into my life at home. It means that I'm just going, go, 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 go. Like I don't have a ton of time to stop and think about it. You know, because I, I come, I come home between every event so I can see Michael um, and see my parents and you know, hang out in like normal life for a couple days. But like, I come home, I'm tired, I do laundry, I watch a minimum of three hours of SVU on TV with my dog and cat. Uh, you know, and I see my at-home friends. And then it's time, and then it's time to pack and leave again. And so, like sometimes, I don't stop and think about, like, oh wow, I have really consistent work, and I really, yeah. And now, like with with ballroom and with ILHC, like you know, I can spend ten hours a day answering emails and checking flights and scheduling and all that kind of stuff. So I mean, it, it for me, I don't, I don't, I don't, and maybe it's just that I don't take it, but I don't take a lot of time to stop and actually think about where I've got. Going back to those days, what were you aspiring to? Just like, not just in Life of Daryl, but like within the dance. I mean, you got into it, started dancing. And then, um, was there like, was there like, I want to do well at this? Or? Uh, well, Naomi and I had a couple sweet goals. Naomi and I had actually kind of similar ones. One was to be in the jam, which we realized not super long after we started dancing. We were asked to go in the jam at Glen Echo <laughs> together. So we did, that happened at the same time. And then, um, like, I thought, it, I really liked teaching and I thought it'd be fun to get better at teaching. That, I don't know if that wasn't necessarily like a goal, but I definitely was interested in it. And then my other goal was to go to Harang, see what all that was about. Cause I had heard about it, it sounded like paradise where you get to go dance all the time and hang out with a billion swing dancers and that kind of stuff. But I didn't, I mean, sadly, this is something I've realized about myself, but. Maybe not sadly. Interestingly, I don't often pay super great attention to like what I'm doing and what my actions are going to actually accomplish. Like I'm like, this is right at the time and I'm gonna do it. Like it, it and that's kind of how teaching ended up for me. I was like, this seems right at the time. I'm bored. I'm homeschooled, so I have the not homeschooled. I have the ability to leave and not miss school. Um, it's great to make money. It's something that is so fun. And so that just seemed like the right thing to do. I never really set out to be like, it's excellent, this gig will probably help me get other gigs in the future. This exposure is really good for me. Like, I never thought about it that way. I thought about it like, I get to go to Texas this weekend. <laughs> you know, and then someone at the time calls you because I didn't have an email address. Or maybe I did, but it, I'm not sure that I even had a computer. Um, but like, then someone calls you and they say, hey, I saw you at blah, and you're like, oh, you saw me there? Oh, okay, huh. And it just kind of spirals. But yeah, this was not my intent. Yeah. What was your first out of town gig? My first out of town gig was Each Town Swing in Houston. Oh, okay. In 1999. Was that Tina? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I remember Tina called me on the phone, because I had met Tina. Um, Tina used to live in D.C., did you know that? Yeah. She used to live in D.C. and I met her and her sister Kathy uh, at the Clinico Dances and she was 
super nice to me. She like just very like she was super supportive and just really nice, you know. Because um, it was weird. Because some of some of the people I feel like when I start when I started dancing, I was thirteen, and a lot of people were in their you know thirties and forties, and like they were like a little weirded out having me there. And like I at the time I thought it was really dumb, but now that I'm not thirteen, it seems much more reasonable that four year olds didn't want to hang out with me. Seems totally reasonable now. At the time, I was like, why do these people believe me? Ugh. You know, um, but she was really nice to me, and she had moved to Texas and called me and said, you know, I'm part of this organization down here, HSDS, and, and she asked me to come down, me and Naomi, and she said, we want you to bring someone from D.C., like, how about Jeff? Jeff, and uh, who was, like, kind of one of my partners at the time. Um, like later we fought a lot more together, but at the time we were just like, we were on a team together and we were just kind of dancing around. One of, he was like one of the, I guess there were like eight of us that all were working on stuff. And so he went down and he taught with me and Naomi. And so like, he taught half classes with her and half classes with me. And, um, and it was really fun. It was like, you know, it was a totally new experience. I'm positive they were the worst classes of all time. Because I'm, I'm very sure that I was not good at teaching Wendy Hoffman, but, uh, but it was cool. Like I, I really enjoyed it. And then they asked us back for uh, Wendy Fest that year, and which was the, um, I guess that was, two, I guess that was 2000. I don't really remember. It must have been 2000 because it was in March. Um, so they asked us back down for that, and then from that, a couple other people. Called and a couple of people emailed and then a couple of people emailed and here we are. But yeah, that's how I got my first date. <laughs> Tina. Thanks, Tina. I actually tell her that all the time because now she's my business partner with ILHC, so I tell her that all the time, like, you know, I wouldn't be here without you. Like, <laughs> nobody would have asked literally. no, literally, nobody would have asked me to teach at 14. Like, and I mean, I guess I was confident <laughs> enough that other people asked me. I assume that I'm better. I hope I'm better now than I was then. But I, you know. It must not have been that bad because other people asked. And, uh, yeah. Then I just went to every event I could go to with the, the 15 year olds allowance. Uh, let's jump. Uh, let's jump over to yeah. I like to say. Uh, let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about uh, the impetus for that. Why you want to do I like to see. Um. Well, for me, I mean, th there's still some parts of I like see that I'm really into that I have that we haven't realized yet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 